happy to welcome you all for this wonderful social science video class. So, children, you know very well we are in the third session of geography lesson one, that is Asia and Europe. So, before entering to the session, I want to convey, uh, convey you some message like always remember everybody is a genius. Okay? So, don't underestimate every, anyone in any situation okay at any cost but if you touch a fish by its ability to climb a tree it will live its whole life believing that it is a stupid okay hope you understand this quote so fish is a king in water right but not on the land as if lion is a king on land but not in the water. So, everybody may be a king or queen in their own particular places, right? So, we should not underestimate anyone, right? So, with this information, let me start the session. As you know very well, we are seeing the session of Asia and Europe about the continent of Asia and Europe. So we had completed learning about the continent Asia and now it's about uh, Europe. Okay. So let's have a small recap as usual. Children. So Asia is a lot. What is the thing that you know already about Asia, the continent? So it is the largest and most populous continent. It covers about 30% of the world's land and about 60% of world's population. So when we speak about the boundaries surrounded by Arctic Ocean in our part, Pacific Ocean and the East Indian Ocean in the South and Ural Mountains, Caucasus, Red Sea, Mediterranean Sea, Caspian and Black Sea in the West. So uh, political divisions, uh, <coughs> there may be 48 countries in Asia. And then physical divisions is about the northern lowlands, the central high mountains, the southern plateaus, the great plains and the island groups. So the northern lowlands, the most expensive lowland in Asia in the Siberian plain, it extends from Ural mountains in the west to the Vekonyask range in the east. So the central highland stretches from Turkey to the Bering Strait to north found in Asia, Palmer North and Armenian not so the himalayan mountain range is the highest mountain range in the world mount everest which has eight eight thousand eight hundred forty eight meter is the highest peak in asia as well as the world okay the lowest point in the world is located in dead sea in asia okay lowest point is dead sea and their intermountain plateaus are also found Important uh, intermountain plateaus may be like plateau of Anatolia, plateau of Yeram, plateau of Tibet. Okay, likewise, we are seeing many uh, political regions of Asia. And then we come to know about the uh, floras and faunas, and also the southern plateaus. The third thing is southern plateau. So, the southern plateaus are, are relatively lower than the northern plateaus. The four important southern plateaus are Arabian plateau. Uh, Deccan Plateau, Shan Plateau and Yenan Plateau. Okay. So, among these plateaus, Arabian Plateau is the largest plateau. Uh, Great Plains, when we speak about the Great Plains, they are formed by major rivers of Asia. The West Siberian Plain, uh, Manchurian Plain, Great Plain of China and indo gangetic Plain, Mesopotamian Plain and Irrawaddy Plain, etc. These are the main plains found in Asian continent and then island groups. So, numerous islands are found in the uh, Pacific coast of Southeast Asia. Kuril, Taiwan, Singapore, Borneo are the important island groups. Philippine, uh, Philippines, Japan Islands and Indonesia are major archipelagos. So, you know very well, archipelagos group of islands is called archipelago. The largest archipelago is Indonesia. Okay. And next is drainage. So, the rivers of Asia originate mostly from Central Highland. The Ob, Enizi and Lena are the major rivers that flows towards the north and drain into the Arctic Ocean. So these rivers uh, remain frozen during winter. 
on the other hand there are some uh, some more perennial rivers also like Brahmaputra, Indus, Ganga and Iravadi and then so it's all about climate Asia exhibits a variety of climate okay in the northern part of Asia experiences severe winter and summer cool summer okay long winter and cool summer the northeastern part of Asia experiences cold winter and warm summer okay likewise area to area it may be different uh, south southeast and eastern parts of Asia strongly influenced by monsoon winds summer is hot and humid uh, humid by winter is cool and dry okay the summer monsoon winds bring heavy rainfall for uh, some countries like India Bangladesh Indochina Philippines and southern China and then uh, natural vegetation when we speak about the natural vegetation it depends on rainfall uh, temperature and soil many floras and faunas are found there orangutan komodo dragon giant panda something like okay and then there are also many floras and faunas um, um, like evergreen trees like mahogany rubber rosewood salt etc are grown there teak sandalwood bamboo right in india if you see like india we have deciduous trees like teak sandalwood and bamboo and also fauna when we speak about fauna tiger elephant indian cobra vipers etc are found in large numbers okay then it's about mineral resources so asia has variety of mineral deposits it uh, holds an important place in the production of iron coal manganese bauxite zinc tungsten petroleum tin etc and also oil and natural gas found in the west uh, asian countries okay one third of the world's oil is produced in asia right likewise we are rich in mineral too and agriculture only about 18 percent of total area is cultivable agriculture is the chief occupation of the people here uh, river valleys in south southeast and east asia have rich alluvial soil so that we may be uh, intensively practicing in riverine plains of asia india has a largest area of uh, arable lands in asia so most of the western asian west asian countries cultivate their crops where the ground water level is nearer to the surface okay so with this we had completed our we had completed our recap session then now it's about europe so europe is the largest sixth largest continent in size and the third largest in population in the world it has diverse landforms and people too it is a birthplace of western civilizations like roman and greek roman civilization and greek civilization and democracy and industrial revolution too so it is the most europe is the most developed continent in the world so uh, let us join and explore the continent okay so before going to the physical divisions we may have the location and size europe spreads from 34 degree 51 minute north okay 34 degree 51 north minute uh, north latitude 81 degree 47 minute north latitude and 24 degree 33 minute west longitude to 69 degree uh, 03 minute east longitude the prime meridian 0 degree longitude passes through greenwich in england okay in england if you see you can able to see okay likewise just see okay and then so the prime meridian 0 degree longitude passes through greenwich in England. So, Europe is found in the northern hemisphere and it covers an area of 10.5 million square kilometer. Right? It is found in the northern hemisphere. Northern hemisphere. Dash is found in the northern hemisphere. Europe. Europe is found in the dash hemisphere. Northern hemisphere. And it covers 10.5 million square kilometer. So, it is surrounded by Arctic Ocean in the north. Black Sea. Just location. When we speak about this uh, surrounding you can remember the world map okay by what and which it was surrounded by so it is surrounded by arctic ocean in the north black sea and mediterranean sea in the south and atlantic ocean in the west and ural mountains in the east so it looks like a giant peninsula okay europe we can call uh, europe as peninsula of peninsulas why because it is surrounded by fully water north arctic ocean mediterranean sea and black sea south atlantic ocean in the west and ural mountains in the east okay right and next is about 
physical divisions physical divisions so when we speak about the physical divisions the north western highlands and uh, the central plateaus highlands and the alpine mountain system and north european plains and north okay these four europe has diversified physical features like mountains plains plateaus peninsulas bays inlands and river basins so it can be divided into four physical divisions northwestern highlands central plateaus alpine mountain system and north european plains okay so first we shall see about the north western highlands so this region includes the mountains and plateaus of norway sweden finland i uh, and iceland okay and iceland and also scotland okay so these regions include the mountains of plateaus this region has the most beautiful fjord coast it was created by glaciers in the past and this region has a lot of lakes which serve as reservoirs for producing uh, hydroelectricity norway and sweden are the largest producers of hydroelectricity in the world right so now fjord what is this fjord a fjord is a narrow and deep sea inlet between steep cliffs so in, in this picture you can see now both sides we have sea uh, cliffs this is the sense mountain like something okay so fjord is a narrow and deep sea inlet between steep cliffs it helps in the following ways how it helps it reduces the speed of wind the irrespective of its direction and the force of sea waves are also controlled hence areas with fjords are best suited for natural harbors okay when we have fjord we may have best natural harbors then now it comes for central plateaus the plateaus are found in the east and west direction across central europe many rivers in europe such as danube volga tagus originate from this plateau the important plateaus of this region are the pennines england okay pennines is situated in england the meseta spain the central massif and jura and france and black forest uh, is, is in germany in these regions has rich mineral resources the pennines is called the backbone of england okay the pennines is called the backbone of england so next is about the alpine mountain system okay so when we speak about alpine mountain system the alpine mountain system consists of chain of young fold mountains found that was found in the southern part of europe okay so chain of young fold mountains that was found in southern part of europe so some of the important mountain ranges are sierra nevada and pyrenees alps apennines and dinaric alps caucasus and carpathian okay these were the uh, important mountain ranges the pyrenees form a natural boundary between spain and france which found uh, which forms a natural boundary between spain and france pyrenees okay so the highest peak in europe is elbers mount elbers mount elbers is the highest peak in europe in the caucasus range the mount blanc the mount blanc m o n t b l a n c the mount blanc found the alps is the second highest peak in the alpine system so there are several active volcanoes in uh, uh, is found in the alpine mountain system like etna vesuvius stromboli okay etna vesuvius and stromboli so in this earthquakes are common in this regions stromboli is called the lighthouse of the mediterranean it is the lighthouse of the mediterranean the stromboli okay mount stromboli is the is called to be the lighthouse of the mediterranean and next comes about the north european plains the north european plains stretches from the atlantic ocean in the west okay it stretches from atlantic ocean in the west to the ural mountains in the east uh, when it comes for north it is surrounded by baltic sea and uh, on the south by alpine mountain it is a narrow in the west and wide towards the east when we speak about this north european plains uh, in west it will be narrow 
okay and uh, eastwards east side it will be broad and major european rivers such as seen rhine danube don crisscross this region and deposit their alluvium so this place is particularly rich in minerals the andalusian plain the hungarian plain valencian plain okay these were the important plains it has rich deposits of coal and iron ore okay the north european plains is densely populated region and cities like paris moscow and berlin are located here you may uh, heard about the plain uh, cities of paris right in new york then next comes for drainage okay next comes for drainage so the rivers play an important a vital role in the development of europe these rivers are used to irrigate farm land and also help to produce electricity okay now let us see uh, a video for better understanding of drainage So with this, let me wish to complete the session children. So in the coming video, uh, we may have learnt about more about Europe like climate, natural vegetations and the landscapes, okay, how come the natural vegetation will be and floras and faunas and also we shall discuss in detail all the book back exercises. So with this, let me complete the session. Stay tuned, stay connected. Thank you. Bye.